Is a seller's permit and a business license the same thing? The answer is no. These are two completely different types of business registrations. And while your business may need both, they are not the same thing and must be registered for separately. First, let's define what each one is so that we can see how they are different. A business license is obtained from your city. It's what tells your city that you are in operation of a business and that that business is registered with that city. A business license license is also known as a business tax certificate. A business license is obtained from your city. When you operate a business, you are required to register that business and obtain a business license, also known as a business tax certificate with your city. Essentially what you are doing is you are paying a small amount of money directly to your city in order to have your business registered and be legally in operation with that city. But this is not the last of your requirements requirements to register your business. Now, because a business license is obtained on the city level and not statewide or nationwide, each and every city is going to have its own unique requirements, process, and fee for obtaining a business license. Business licenses generally will be between $50 and $200 and are required to be renewed typically every year. Both sole proprietorships as well as LLCs are required to register with their city and obtain a business license. If you are forming an LLC, this is not something that is included in your LLC filing paperwork with the Secretary of State. This must be done separately because it is not done on the state level, but rather is done on the city level. Now a seller's permit is something completely different, but might also be a requirement for your business. If your business sells tangible products, then you might be required to obtain a seller's permit, not just for the area where your products are being sold and where you operate your business, but also you may be required to hold a seller's permit in other states where buyers are purchasing your products. Now, unlike a business license, which is on the city level, a seller's permit is on the state level. Level. Different states have different requirements as to who must hold a seller's permit. Now, because this is on a statewide level, it can differ from state to state. You most likely are going to be required to register for a seller's permit, file sales and use tax returns, and remit that sales tax that you have collected over to your tax and fee administration. In California, seller's permits are issued by the CDTFA, the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Now, if your business is operating within the state of California and you are selling tangible goods and products, then you are going to be required to hold a seller's permit. The CDTFA states that you're required to hold a seller's permit if you are engaged in business and make three or more tangible sales within a 12 month period. If you're only going to be making sales temporarily, then you must apply for a temporary seller's permit. Exception for this is if you are conducting absolutely all of your sales using what is called a marketplace facilitator. A marketplace facilitator is a third party company that is not only conducting and transacting all of the sales for you, but they specifically are collecting and remitting that sales tax over to the CDTFA instead of you. The Marketplace Facilitators Act states that if you are conducting absolutely all of your transactions using only a marketplace facilitator, then you most likely don't need to obtain a seller's permit or file your own unique sales and use tax returns. Why? Because the marketplace facilitator is doing all of that instead of you. But here's where it gets tricky. If you're someone out of state that holds a nexus in the state of California, or if you have buyers in other states and you hold nexus in those states, States, then you may be required to obtain seller's permits in those other locations. There's one really important detail. Many of you may be making online transactions and using a site such as Shopify, Big Cartel, or other websites that allow you to create shops and you may be confused in reading their documentation. Many of these websites state that you do not need to hold a business license in order to sell on their platform. Keep in mind that any requirements that the website host, the store, the online store generator is going to have 
is not going to excuse you from your city, state, and county requirements for operating a legal business. If you're engaged in business, if you're transacting sales, make sure that you look up with your own specific city, state, and county what their requirements are. Because websites such as Shopify do not care if you are legally compliant with your city and state requirements. There's no way that they're going to follow up and check on all of your requirements. They simply are transacting the sales. So because that burden of legal compliance is going to be on you, it is your obligation to make sure that you check in with your city, state, and county. Most likely you are going to need to obtain a business license as well as a seller's permit. In the state of California, there's a really easy way to check this. You can go to calgold.ca.gov and here you can type in your city or your county as well as your industry and get a full list of all of the required registrations, permits, licenses, etc., in order to operate a legal business in your county and industry. Many of you may be left with the question, how do I know if I hold Nexus so that I can make sure that I obtain proper permits within those states as well? I want you to click the video popping up on screen right now where we're gonna cover that topic.